Okay. So uh, I propose to begin, and I will say one more time that the topic of our webinar today, uh, Demand Planner's Daily Routine in the Post-AI Implementation Era, and we will begin here. So uh, the speakers of today's webinar will be Helen, Helen, our product director, and it's me, Mark Rose. I'm the business development at Lithio. And... Hey. Yeah, hi, guys. Thanks. Thanks. Two of us. Helen is here as well. Uh, yeah, we can go next. <laughs> okay, so the previous slide, please, Helen. <laughs> oh, something, yeah, yeah. something, okay. sorry. So that's okay. Currently, guys, uh, we have a projects in 17 countries at Lifio, and we implemented more than 160 projects. And at the moment, we have around 100 employees working in our team. And Regarding our customers, the few words. Uh, so we are actually working with different type of retailers with different verticals. And our background is in grocery retail, health and beauty, convenience stores, supermarkets. But we also like had a lot of experience working with electronics, oil and gas, DIY, and toy retailers as well. So uh, regarding our solutions, the Lithio is a platform itself that helps us to automate the different areas of supply chain with the help of AI and machine learning. And the platform consists itself of four modules. So the first module in here is our inventory optimization. This module helps us to automate the replenishment processes, both like at the level of your stores and central warehouses. And this module also consists like deep powerful BI module in order to help your demand planners to identify some bottlenecks. Our promotion management is the solution that intended to manage all of your promotion activities that you have and forecast sales for the promotion periods. Our shelf efficiency uh, helps us to cover end-to-end -end merchandising processes, uh, starting like from the planogram creation to its execution and analysis. And this helps us uh, to create the floor plan, first of all, put the equipment on it, and then create the detailized plan planogram. And after that, control and execute the processes, like with the help of our mobile application. And this module has a deep and powerful analytical block as well. And our new uh, recently introduced solution, it's our assortment performance. That is a solution that allows you to manage the assortment, create the assortment metrics, and introduce and display the new products, aggregate stores by format automatically, and tracks analytic, and so on. So there is a four current solution at our portfolios. So. I will give the word to Helen here. Yeah, and uh, uh, just regarding uh, the solutions, they are linked with the help of the platform. And our customers who are using um, a couple of solutions or all of them, they gain uh, some additional added value from the platform itself because uh, our solutions are linked with each other and uh, it helps us to help our customers to gain the efficiency uh, and to grow the economical effects of the usage of uh, the whole platform itself. Okay, so uh, now we will, uh, before we will start the core topic of uh, our today's webinar, just a couple of uh, organizational points. Uh, if uh, you will have some questions um, uh, regarding the slides or regarding the content that we will be sharing, please uh, put them, uh, write them into the chat and uh, we will be, it will be great to answer them uh, just after the webinar will end. Uh, and um, in case of any technical um, issues or if something will be wrong with the connection, uh, please uh, try to um, link to Zoom for once more time. And if it doesn't help, please let us know that something is wrong uh, for us to be sure that everything is heard and seen. Okay, uh, so uh, to start with uh, our main topic, so today we are going to talk about the um, working day of the demand planner who is responsible for the purchasing function and for the replenishment function as well. Uh, and to before uh, to covering this topic, uh, we wanted to um, uh, start uh, our conversation with uh, just a, a quick reminder um, 
uh, regarding the way of uh, the inventory management processes development during the last uh, last decades. Uh, so uh, we have uh, done a very long way uh, with our customers in process of uh, uh, improving the supply chain uh, starting from 2010s. And uh, at that time, it was quite usual uh, to see the decentralized purchasing function um, and uh, replenishment function as well. So what does it mean? It means that uh, uh, on the level of each store, somebody like the store manager uh, was making the purchase orders to suppliers or to the central warehouse. Uh, and uh, everything was like uh, fully decentralized. They, uh, in some cases, they had some tools and in some cases they uh, they doesn't uh, and uh, they don't and uh, uh, it was like a way uh, that uh, had some plenty of mistakes uh, just because of the human factor. Uh, and even now, sometimes we face with such kind of processes, uh, but of course, more rarely uh, and uh, still in, in some uh, uh, retail companies, there are still uh, decentralized processes of uh, purchase and replenishment. In fact, uh, it is not something like a, like a mistake or an issue, uh, but... Um, when uh, we are uh, accompanying our customers uh, in the way from decentralized processes to centralized processes, um, we see really fabulous financial impact uh, on these changes. But of course, when uh, the processes start to be centralized, it is uh, very critical uh, to have the automated tool to cover uh, this uh, processes with the help of the automation and to cover the so-called routine tasks of the demand planner. Uh, okay, uh, so during these years, um, we have seen a lot of changes and challenges um, that were connected with the uh, development of the um, of the market. Uh, of course, it is the increased competition in retail sector and accept uh, uh, the new um, retail chains uh, that are opening from year to year. Uh, of course, we see the new formats and forms of uh, uh, retail such as uh, different types of Yecom, dark stores, uh, and etc. Um, of course, uh, the... Uh, rapid speed of innovations uh, that can increase the customer satisfaction and reduce waste. Uh, if to compare the current state with the state 10 years ago, um, so basically the approach is the same, but the speed uh, of uh, innovations and uh, the speed of, uh, uh, let's say, computers uh, just now, uh, the, all this leads us to um, uh, use uh, all this innovative, innovative technologies uh, to make these processes more efficient uh, and lead to the best uh, uh, customer satisfaction uh, and, of course, to um, increase the financial and economical efficiency uh, of uh, the replenishment processes and inventory management as a whole. Uh, the decrease in well-known brand SQ margin, I think that uh, it is quite clear, uh, and the increase of uh, in the complexity of the supply chain structures uh, supply uh, uh, structures and supply chain processes so basically uh, all these factors and a lot more uh, all this leads their retail companies and provoke their retail companies to seek the ways of increasing the efficiency uh, and one of the ways in this uh, uh, way is the improvement and uh, uh, automation of the inventory management processes uh, with the help of the latest technologies the routine order generation could be and sending could be made fully automated. And uh, in our practice, we have a lot of customers who have basically uh, these processes automated for 90, 95, and 99%, uh, and only um, 10, 5, or 1% uh, is uh, covered manually by demand planners. Uh, but uh, of course, not only order generation and sending, uh, a lot of other processes 
could be covered uh, with the help of the automation as well. It is like uh, such kind of an, uh, a task like order optimization, like uh, prioritizing of orders in case of deficits, uh, promotional forecasting, seasonality calculation, uh, taking into account some uh, vendor vacations, uh, preparations to some holidays, and etc. So if talking about this process as a whole, it is rather, it is rather a complex process uh, that really consists of a lot of different angles and a lot of different participants. Uh, and the automation of these processes can lead to a significant increase in efficiency. Uh, and uh, uh, so today uh, we will switch, just now we will switch to um, uh, our solution uh, and uh, we'll try to uh, go through the everyday routine tasks of the demand planner. Uh, we call this person who is responsible for purchase order and replenishment a demand planner, but of course, um, uh, this person could be uh, named in just another way. It could be structured uh, in terms of different departments, uh, but still, um, it will be like from the angle of this person who is responsible for these processes. Uh, if uh, you are interested uh, in uh, our uh, experience in terms of the organizational structure uh, of the inventory management, uh, uh, we can share uh, our uh, article regarding this uh, this topic um, just after the webinar. And uh, starting from this point, I will give a word to Mark. Uh, yes. and he will start this. Thank yeah. you, Helen. So uh, currently, guys, you can see the state of the system like at the beginning of the manager's working day. It's our lovely dashboard. And this dashboard is always letting you know the issues that are any issues that are currently ongoing. And for this like kind of uh, webinar today, we decided to do this kind of like a role play. So my name will be Rick. And I'm a fictional character for this webinar, and I just want to clarify it. And in here, I'm a demand planner in Cherries and Good Wine Company. And the majority of orders have been already sent to the suppliers at the start of the working day. And before uh, implementing the Leafy Inventory Optimization System, I was running to my workplace to not face those nervous suppliers. I hope you know what I mean. I had a limited time when I needed to send an orders before because I was doing the halfway uh, automatically and the halfway manually. That was the reason why the suppliers were nervous. And currently now I'm, I came to work and made myself like a cup of coffee, uh, but I'm absolutely sure that all of my orders of which I'm responsible or the vast majority of them, uh, they have been already calculated for me and sent to the suppliers on this state. Um, uh, Helen, do you want to add the words here? Uh, yes. So uh, I should uh, I should say that uh, during this webinar, we are not going to cover the algorithms, features, uh, and models for calculating the demand forecasting and uh, calculating the purchase orders. Uh, if this topic is relevant for you, please uh, feel free to contact us. Uh, but but uh, of course, uh, during this webinar, uh, we we will not uh, cover this point, but we would love to talk about this in person. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Okay, yeah, going back to our dashboard, guys, uh, the orders have been actually sent. But if I have a certain number of orders that did not like pass the optimization criteria or have any specific or extra long lead time, I had to deep dive into them and analyze them. Uh, and here, uh, it is possible uh, to change the number of orders if I have some information. And then, like on this point, after we change and put a new quantity and set up like the reason why we, we did it, uh, on this point, the work with the orders for me ends today. So the simply like the way and everything has been already completed from this side. So uh, going back to our dashboards, I also paid attention to our new SKUs that have been introduced to the assortment. 
And usually they are worked out in the terms of determining the first order for the new SKUs automatically. And still, for some reason, they can be some SKUs, a uh, few of them, that need to get a look at it. So usually it's done automatically, but the system based on the cluster analysis and the similarity of this SKU with the existing SKUs. But this is also like automated process. And on this point, uh, I finished my regular task everyday routine connected with the orders and the new ad introduced SKUs. And I also have some indicators of our lost sales and overstocks, which are calculated on a daily basis in our case and compared to the same day of the last week. Uh, it's important like for me to see this trend. And if this trend is deteriorating, I will go to analyze the reason. So we can uh, view SKUs here. And for example, um, I will take uh, our like 10 SKUs here and go through them step by step. And then I will need to get like uh, just a few seconds. And yeah, Helen, can you please open the graph? Okay, thanks. And we can see that he, here we have some accesses before we order something wrong a long time ago. And in this case, I will go to the category manager and say that I need to return this, this like SKUs to the supplier because I know that this supplier accepts the returns. So uh, in this case, I will do the same with our lost sales in the process of the continuous improvement of the supply chain. So the next part, guys, that I want to cover for you. So I will move on the strategic dashboard. And in here, I will analyze it on a weekly basis. Like, for example, today is a Monday. And today I need to understand like whether everything is fine with the key indicators for my site. It's worth like to pay attention to the fact that despite the level of our automation, there are still problems such as shortages, problem with suppliers, I would say like late deliveries, changes in trends, or a competitor's promotion currently, and many other factors that are poorly predictable, but have a strong impact on our supply chain. And of course, I understand that a category manager, that's me in my case, so also pay attention, but it's also very important for me because I'm a responsible for the inventory turnover and for the availability to see the trends of these indicators and to be sure that in terms of inventory, there is no problem and everything like is going into the right direction. Uh, and why do you consider these specific indicators uh, like the inventory turnover and the availability um, to be so important for you? Yeah, uh, thank you for your question, Helen. And also guys, yeah, I wanna mention one more time. So if you have any question or you wanna like, to get uh, some information regarding some specific parts, just don't hesitate and shoot them to our chat. So going back to Helen's question. So in our company, like we believe that inventory turnover and av availability, it's the most important criteria for us because the inventory turnover shows us there are money, like the amount of frozen money. And on the other hand, like the availability showed us if we're keeping the stock on the shelves and all of our products that are in the source matrix are presented on the shelves. So that's, I think that's the answer in here. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, so let's move on uh, to the dashboard and the daily tasks. And uh, my fiction character um, would be Rita and uh, I am the, uh, colleague um, uh, as and as well a, a demand planner for for the company and I will go to the next tasks that will be connected with some unlogical things from the system points of, of view. Um, I, today I have two errors uh, considering the information regarding the order accuracy and the promotional products. Uh, just a couple of words regarding the promotional activities. Of course. 
All this information could be transferred from the ERP system uh, to the LIFO inventor optimization via the data exchange. And we are keeping track, of course, uh, regarding the uh, efficiency of the today's data exchange. Uh, and uh, not in all companies, it is possible to get all the necessary data for starting and preparing to promotional activities. Um, but in case uh, this data is available, we are taking all the data from the ERP system, um, making all the calculations and the forecasts uh, uh, on our side and starting the promotional activity fully automatically without any human intervention. Uh, but in case, if not uh, all the um, uh, information regarding the uh, promotional activities, regarding the um, uh, promotional uh, mechanics and types, uh, some historical data regarding and uh, data regarding the prices and the percentage of uh, per percentages of discount is available in the ERP system. Um, in this case, this data need to be um, uh, set in the system itself. Uh, but today, as uh, we are just covering the process as automated as possible, uh, we will talk about this process in case it is fully automated. Uh, but despite the fact of the 100% automation of, uh, of this data, in some cases, we can have some issues regarding the promotional, uh, promotional uh, items. So uh, in here, we have some active promotional activities with misconfigured items. And what does it mean? Uh, we can uh, deep dive into each particular SKU and see whether we have some problems with starting the forecasting processes or starting the promotional activity. Let's go through, uh, let's go to the uh, to an example of this promotional activity. Here we have the details of this upcoming promotional campaign, the start date, the uh, end date, and some uh, general setting for this uh, upcoming promotional campaign. Uh, and in here, we see that uh, some number of SKUs uh, were forecasted uh, and uh, everything is fine. They are highlighted with green color and vice versa. We have a number of SKUs that do not have the initial promotional, um, um, promotional forecast uh, because of some reason. And here we highlight the reason for not calculating the forecast uh, for this particular SKUs. And in this particular case, the main reason is that uh, we will not have orders un until the end date uh, of the upcoming promotional campaign. So basically, we will not have an opportunity even to uh, make the purchase order. So in this case, we need to decide whether to uh, make some purchase orders uh, not due to the supplier schedule or to change uh, some settings of the promotional campaign in terms of the end date or some other variants. So making some managerial decisions in terms of uh, promotional uh, preparation and promotional SKUs. And going back to the errors, we have some uh, um, um, problems with the order accuracy and the system highlights that uh, today for me, I have uh, some items that uh, are active in, in the assortment range, but basically uh, it is not possible to make the purchase order because of uh, uh, the absence of uh, the supplier schedule. Uh, and here is a list of all these items. Uh, we can uh, uh, work through them. So basically, there are 53 uh, such kind of SKUs in terms of the locations. And yeah, they really don't have the supplier schedule. And we need to check if uh, everything is okay with this particular supplier and his supplier schedule and add this supplier schedule to the system. Um, basically, uh, in more uh, in, in the vast variety of the situation, it would be the information in the ERP system that will transfer to the leafy inventory optimization solution, but still um, we need to uh, take it into account as well. 
of course, there are a lot of uh, different features connected with the seasonality calculation, uh, connected with uh, the order optimization parameters uh, that uh, are need to be taken into account by the system. Uh, but all this is done mainly due, uh, during the implementation process. And as a state, um, uh, at the state of uh, the start uh, of the working day of the demand planner, uh, um, it is pretty all that he will need to take into account if the processes are fully automated. Uh, and uh, um, what uh, what else uh, could be done by the demand planner uh, if he uh, doesn't uh, mm, waste his time on this routine task of the order calculation? And in uh, the previous example, um, like uh, going to uh, the working place for uh, eight o'clock in the morning to cope with all the orders uh, because the supply were waiting for them. And just now I will uh, pass the word uh, to Mark as well to talk about the analytical module, which is considered to be very important in the process of uh, ongoing improvements. Yeah, thank you, Helen. So I will add here that with a high level of automation, still mistakes are happening in the supply chain. And this is like related to the reliability of the suppliers all kind of spike of demands, all like trends, all your seasonal duties, and a lot can actually go wrong because it's a very unstable environment, guys. And therefore, it's very important for us to analyze like the different angles of our like supply chain. And now uh, we will show you how you can like very quickly analyze a negative trend. And we will start with our like-for-like -like analysis. So in this, in this report, just give it a second. So we will see and compare some periods of time and we can build a like for like in terms of like our months, quarters, weeks, and years as well. Like for example, we will build it in terms of months and we will compare May and September. And what do we see here? So we see our most important like inventory management KPIs, like average stocks, our sales, our average overstocks, our loss sales, our turnover, our percentage of availability as well. So in our analysis, like we see that uh, we have some issues with our stocks and our stocks. And we have like uh, some issues with the loss sales as well. And we need to discover them and drill down more to find out the reason of this current problem. So uh, to find out more, uh, we will go to our next report uh, to lost sales reason. And let's give it a second. Okay, so for example, we wanna investigate the reason of the most like of the lost sales. And that's why we are going to the specific report that Helen is already opened. That's lost sales for our three previous weeks and where the system like helped us to identify like each specific SKU with the loss sales during the previous week in terms of our like amount of money. So let's open the SKU, okay, apricot jumbo weights. And in this case, we see guys that for the previous week only, we lost almost $6,000. And it's the issues that uh, we understand it's the reason of the loss sales. So all the reasons of our like sales are grouped in this diagram. And we see that the structure of the reasons for the lost sales and for more than 40% in our case of all cases in terms of our lost sales, we see that they are cured because of our external supplier didn't fulfill the orders that weren't sent like to him. So we need to understand more and we are choosing this reason and we can name uh, like visualization. Uh, we can change, like set it up like based on supplier name and in terms of our suppliers. And we see that the most problematic supplier in our case is the supplier number 345. So uh, to analyze more, we will go to the suppliers report and definitely we will need to understand like uh, more regarding our supplier reliability. So, uh, the next report will be like is connected to the suppliers and there was like uh, the list of our suppliers before and 
here we see that number supplier number three, four, five. Um, and also like we can investigate the indicators based on this supplier, like the indicators, like the share of our purchase and sales, the sharing our like currency of the company, the balances of turnover, the overstock and lost sales as well. And as well, the trend of the suppliers of reliability. And we see that, yes, it's decreased a lot. And basically the category manager must contact with the supplier and ask him and understand why it happened. And maybe like uh, make some other decisions, either like to change the supplier or make some negotiations with supplier and so on. So guys, uh, on this point, yeah, I will say that uh, it was just an example, like how can we understand what the cause of our problem is, but as well, you can also analyze the inventory and we have like a function in the system that helps us to understand what to do in this point. And we can return them to the supplier if agreed upon with the supplier before. And we can do promo or we can do internal relocation. And we have like a spe special mechanism where the system uh, itself like will determine it for you and like what and where to move like those SKUs. And uh, as a Rick, like that fiction, a fictional character, I have a, like some hour schedule during the week of what analysis I, I do at what day. And it helps our company actually to earn more. And our suppliers most of the time are very happy with the interaction with us and ask like, what is the, like, what is the secret of our success is? So the, the secret is simple. It's leave your inventory optimization. <laughs> You know everything. So yeah, on this point, I will pass the word to Helen. That's uh, it from my side covering the reports. And guys, if you still have some questions or you want us some like some more specification or details, just don't hesitate. We have a chat in here. Shoot us your questions, and we will be able to answer to them. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Rick, very much. Uh, and uh, just uh, to summarize uh, everything that was uh, said regarding the system functionality, of course, uh, the system covers all the, all the replenishment processes and all the processes that are connected with the purchase orders uh, throughout the retail chain and to the external suppliers. To make these precise orders and uh, for the um, our customers and retail companies to rely on the system, um, we are using the latest technologies uh, for making all the calculations and uh, basically ma making the most accurate demand forecasting. Uh, of course, uh, during the 30 minutes, we have covered only like very um, in a in a kind of a helicopter view how this process can look like. During the implementation process, uh, we are building these processes for each and every uh, company with each with this particular specifics, uh, with uh, uh, the data that is uh, uh, actually in the ERP system and uh, understanding which data is uh, absent and uh, which data need to be collected additionally in our solution as well. Uh, depending on the structure of the um, department that is responsible for uh, these tasks uh, and a lot, a lot uh, more other factors that influence like the architecture uh, of these processes. Uh, but still, uh, as we have started, uh, all these processes could be automated and the percentage of this automation could be very high with the help of the technologies. But still, people are involved in these processes and still people are needed um, like to... Um, uh, go through the indicators, understanding the trends of the indicators uh, and understanding like the root cause of the problem uh, and uh, in the way of eliminating the root cause uh, of uh, problems in the supply chain, only in this case, it is possible uh, like to improve the indicators in the long term perspective. Just after the implementation, uh, all our customers uh, have this great 
great results uh, because uh, the processes uh, were automated or they were automated previously and just now they are automated in a better manner with the help of the better algorithms and etc. Uh, but still, when uh, our aim is the long-term partnerships uh, with our customers, that's why we are interested in the long-term perspective and the long-term improvement of these indicators. And it is possible with the help of the automation and uh, with the help of uh, understanding the trends and understanding the indicators uh, involving into this process and improving it. And uh, just one more uh, one more slide before we will uh, finish the presentation for today. Uh, how can uh, we how we can get there? Uh, it is uh, obvious, but sometimes it is not obvious in the projects that uh, uh, we definitely need to have very clear understanding of the goal before the beginning of uh, any kind of uh, changes. Um, this process seems to be rather obvious. I mean, the process of the purchasing and the process of the internal replenishment. Uh, but uh, still, there are a lot of there is a lot of issues. So there are a lot of issues in these processes, uh, which need to be uh, um, worked with and uh, um, eliminated uh, during the implementation process. And uh, usually, this process takes a while. And uh, it is not done like uh, during uh, some couple of days. So before starting, it is very it is very crucial to understand the goal. Uh, the second point is this process is first and automation is second. Um, before starting any kind of automation, it is uh, uh, crucial to eliminate this house and uh, processes that have some issues. That's why, first of all, in all our projects, we uh, tend to um, 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 improve processes first of all and afterwards um, build this automation on the basement of correct processes intelligent technologies intelligent data uh, to use the latest technologies like uh, machine learning for example uh, we definitely need to have a plenty of data and this data needs to be collected this data needs to be uh, clean and this data needs uh, uh, need to exist now that's why in a lot of cases, even with customers with very high level of operational efficiency, we face uh, with the absence of the necessary data, especially for the long term forecasting and for um, promotional forecasting as during uh, the process of the promotional forecasting, a lot of factors influence and uh, are used uh, in the promotional forecasting. So uh, collecting the data and storing this data is a very tough task, but necessary to use the intelligent technologies. Uh, of course, reliable partners. Uh, um, so in each specific sphere, um, it is uh, better to work with professionals. And uh, as retailers are professionals in the retail sector, uh, IT companies like ours can help uh, retailers to improve their processes in terms of automation uh, as we are professionals in uh, IT technologies. Uh, and uh, of course, big changes, uh, big efforts. Uh, any project is a project and uh, really needs to. So you definitely need to be prepared for uh, giving this efforts to make the, all the necessary changes uh, in these processes. I think that it is pretty all. In case of any questions, please uh, type them into the chat or you can uh, contact us uh, and we will be happy to answer them in person. Yes, thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, thank you, Helen. And yeah, <clears throat> sorry. I will specify one more time that in case like you have some questions unanswered, you can reach us out by those phone numbers or just send us an email and we are, we are like looking forward to respond to you so guys yeah thank you one more time for your time and 
it was nice to see you here. Thank you for joining our webinar. I hope it was like productive for you. And thank you, Helen, for hosting it with me. Yeah, thank you.